Hello. In this unit we're going to talk about how to get that file closed on time. Usually in any file there's only a couple points of failure that make things go south, that make things go weird on a transaction to where it might jeopardize the transaction, or things that might delay the file so that it doesn't close on the day it's supposed to and everybody will hate our guts. How do we go ahead and get this file closed? Well, the true answer is you probably need to have everything pretty much done the week before the closing. That way if anything does crop up last minute you have plenty of time to fix it. One of the things you're going to want to do more than anything is clearly express to the people that they should not buy or finance anything while they're selling their house and before they buy their next house. They should not buy a car, they should not buy anything on their credit cards, they should not go out Christmas shopping, whatever. You just need to simply tell them that nothing needs to change for the next 90 days until that loan is closed. And a lot of people will struggle with that, but you need to stay on top of them. And in fact, one of the things I try to do every couple of weeks is talk with people and just say, listen, I just want to make sure that nothing has changed on your credit. You guys haven't bought any new cars. You guys haven't gotten any new credit cards. You guys haven't ran up any new debt. And everything materially is the same way as when we first did the application, correct? And I want to drive it into their brains that they're not to go out there and do a spending spree and start buying their furniture early or anything like that. I want them just to be focused and tight and tell them to reserve every single penny they can and be frugal and try to put as much in the bank as they can for unexpected closing costs or shocks that may happen. Also, one of the things I'll do is I'll actually put in a pad. I'll put in an additional item on my good faith estimate, and I'll call it refundable escrow pad. And the reason I do that is because I know that something is going to come up, and usually on a purchase I try to put in an extra $500 just to make sure that nothing comes up and nothing surprises anybody. A lot of times that allows me to actually come in a little bit under, usually a couple hundred dollars under what I expected, so I'm able to say, yeah, actually we were able to come in a couple hundred dollars cheaper, and it makes everybody feel good. So I on purpose push up that number and I put in a refundable escrow pad as an added item on the good faith estimate and that's a legitimate item that any good escrow company will allow you to put on there that's not a problem at all now one of the things you're gonna to want to do is when you do the appraisal you're gonna to want to schedule it and then you're gonna to want to give the information to the agent who's representing the buyers do not do not d-o-n-o-t do not give it to the listing agent the agent who has listed the property will want to say, well, let me see the appraisal. You just simply say this. If you need the appraisal, you can go to the buyer's agent, and they'll more than be glad to give it to you, I'm sure. But it's not my place to do that because I'm not really sure all the things that are going on in this transaction, and I'm not privy to all the negotiations between the agents. I'm just simply a neutral person that focuses on the financing. And if you do that, it'll shut them down. A lot of times the listing agent will want to know the appraisal so that they can be sure that they didn't sell the property too cheap. One of the things you need to be careful of is if you do give the listing agent the appraisal you may put your buyer's agent in a rough situation because the buyer's agent may have gotten a really good deal on that property and now the listing agent and the people that sold the property feel like they got hosed and they're going to try to get out of that deal. So be very very careful not to give the appraisal to the people who are selling the home. Only give it to the buyer's agent, the person that's representing the buyers, and give it to the buyers themselves just to make them feel comfortable that they're getting a decent deal on this property. One of the things you're going to need to be very, very careful of is the fact that a lot of times realtors really don't understand how to read a good faith estimate, a truth in lending statement, or a HUD statement. And the problem is is that realtors will try to explain it to their clients. Now one of the things I encourage you to do more than anything is get the realtor on the phone and get the clients on the phone and make sure everybody has a copy of the final closing numbers, the final HUD. And go over it together, line item by line item. And if you do it with the realtor on the phone, the realtor can never come back and say, oh, well, I saw this item, this is a junk fee, and I saw this, and da-da-da-da-da. A lot of realtors, to justify their job, will try to explain things they don't fully understand. And especially with new realtors, it can cause tremendous problems where the people feel like you're lying to them, doing a bait and switch with them. So make sure when the final numbers come down, you sit down there. And if you even can do it in person, it's even better. But over the phone, make sure that everybody has a copy of it via email and go over the numbers line item by line item. And some people will beg for mercy. They'll say, listen, I trust you. I'm sure that all of it's there and it's just fine. 
But what you need to do is you need to tell a person, the reason I do this is so that there's no questions at the closing table as to what all of these numbers represent and mean to you. And if you just simply hold firm and keep on pushing through that HUD, you'll be in good shape. And I've saved so many deals that could have gone south, even on deals where they weren't getting a very good deal from me, just because I simply needed to do certain things to make money for myself or to get things done to do the financing. And because I went through the numbers and they saw it already and they were preconditioned to be able to accept the fact that I was charging them X number of dollars and that X number of dollars were needed to make this deal happen, they were willing to swallow it because I sat down on the phone and I d diffused any future bombs from blowing up in my face by having the realtor there by having them there and being able to smooth out the entire process. Now the next unit we're going to talk about is why face to face is back in style. While it's the best thing to do and why the phone is effective but why you really need to focus on more FaceTime with your clients and your realtors.